So here's a kind of way image of the missile base. Uh, we started out on top of the silo. Now we're over here in the launch control center. See how small we are compared to this? Then we're going to go through the tunnel and look down into the silo. Originally, there were nine floors, a crib which held the missile in place. start this vlog in the one and only gutted bus yes I am in the bus that the team the bus team converted at gutted right now the bed is a happy jack bed and it goes up and down on a little button right here and there's a little dinette area but that's not what this video is about it's not about a tour of this bus although we are gonna get a tour in with Wes the producer of gutted but I'm gonna walk out to show you guys where I'm at right now so I just picked up the bus in Kansas City, which is where it's stored, and I'm taking it to Colorado Tiny House Festival. I asked Wes if I could take the bus down there and kind of promote season two, because I think Gutted is a phenomenal show, and I wanted to promote it, I wanted to show that off, and I get to obviously camp for free in the Gutted bus, why not? Like, that's obvious. On my way down I-70, which is connects Kansas City to Denver, uh, I came across this gem of a place, which is in the middle of Kansas. And people would think like Kansas is like a flyover state, nothing too special, nothing crazy. Not where I'm at. This place is rad. I somehow found it on hip camp. You, I'll just turn around, you can see. There's like a bunch of us here and there's a couple more coming. What's cool about this place it is a missile silo. I will put the link actually in the description below. We're gonna get a tour of the silo Matthew, the owner of this land, is gonna give us a tour of the entire silo. I'm gonna show you guys all of that. I'll see you guys in the morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm here with Matthew, the host of the property. He's gonna give you way more information than I am about the, it's, it's abandoned, right? Yeah, well, it was abandoned. <laughs> I own it now, so. You know, you have this abandoned missile silo now. Uh -huh. um, you have a website which is atlasadastra.com atlas was the name of the missile that was stored here underground okay. and uh <laughs> ad astra is latin for to the stars so oh okay it's part of our state motto in kansas right in the center of the united states some people would say it's the middle of nowhere i i say it's the middle of everywhere Boom. you know we're right by i-70 right now we're still in the renovation process so eventually we'll have underground structure that you could stay in i'm fixing up the launch control <laughs> Control center where the missileers used to live. Come on. Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. That's awesome. All right, so I guess I'm coming back here to check this out. You do two tours a day. Uh-huh. Which uh you uh provide one hour historical tour. I take you into the history of the missile base and and why this whole program was put together and and then we walk around the property. I show you some points of interest like the antenna pit and different stuff and then we get to go underground to the bunker where the launch control center was where they could have launched this missile and we go through a tunnel and look down into the silo it's a lot of fun i'm super intrigued by american history and whatnot so thank you so much for doing this also we apologize for any wind disturbance it is in the middle of kansas so there is going to be a little bit of wind this base was uh, engineered or designed to withstand a nearby nuclear strike the concrete here at the surface is nine feet thick uh, these blast doors are three foot thick, 75 tons each. So you had large hydraulic rams that would open up the doors like this. And how many of these silos are in existence today? So they built 72 of these Atlas F missile silos all across the nation. Before, how many acres are you sitting on? So I have about 24 acres of land here. I, so I mow beautiful. hiking paths all around the property so guests can go hiking with their dogs or whatever. And actually just over there you have a, uh, you just started a new like RV park. That's right. Yeah. So. Uh, Excavating and leveling out all the land. It's gonna trench in electric, water, have high-speed internet. I've already trenched fiber optics onto the property. Turn this into a gift shop and coffee shop. My wife, she loves her gourmet coffee in the morning and 
and maybe a wine and whiskey bar in the evenings. The new RV park over here that I'm working on. Uh, you actually told me last night that you were like, you envisioned something with this. What were you, what were you trying to do here? Yeah, so what's interesting is uh, I, I want to make it look like a sunflower from Google Earth, okay? <laughs> That'd be so cool, yeah. So the, the sunflower is our state flower here in Kansas, but it's also the international symbol for nuclear disarmament. Uh, sunflowers have been used to bring radiation out of Chernobyl, and uh, so it's a cool tie-in to the nuclear missile base. Hey, here's Leanne. So Leanne is my better half, who's helping me with all of the uh, like websites and swag and, and different stuff that we're trying to put together. So you're the brands behind everything? Pretty much. Okay. And we've been working side by side for better than, I don't know, 12 years? Nice. Yeah, we Very met nice. underground yep. in a missile base. So <laughs> and then you ended we up buying one. We got married at a missile base, <laughs> and now we own one. What we're standing on here, there were two Quonset Hut buildings. So uh, that's a steel curved structure that was used by your construction crews at the time. Oh, okay. You had about 200 men who were working on building this place. One thing we would like to do is build a new structure over where the um, uh, septic and, and plumbing is and have a shower house, laundry facility, and kitchen that guests can use when they come here. Here on this pad, it's 40 foot by 100 foot long. We want to turn this into an event center where we could host weddings, concerts, corporate retreats, a variety of events. So. You have a lot of work in front of you. I know, right? <laughs> As you can see, we're doing some construction here. Yeah, that is a new structure. That is not old. Yep. Which is one of the things we really love about this is that the government left behind some really great infrastructure. And we're having a blast taking that old stuff and transforming it and making use of it. Having a blast, pun, in, pun intended. <laughs> that other well house was, uh, is now the outhouse. That one behind us. That's yeah. right. Okay. So when I first started coming out here, I had uh, 53 Boy Scouts and their fathers come out for camping. Now I'm all like, how am I going to deal with all their poop, right? <laughs> uh, donated the toilet seats from Academy of Sports that snap on a bucket mm -hmm. and got uh, toilets and cedar shavings donated as well. And so the composting bucket system worked for a while. Then we found this company called Home Biogas. They're based out of Israel. For about $1,000, they shipped us a toilet that feeds to a biodigester, which feeds to a cook stove. Wow. So the lower section of that bag, um, as it fills up with all of that waste, you see there's a spout sticking up. Yeah. You can throw in food scraps and other organic material. As that anaerobic biodigestion process happens, the upper chamber begins filling up with biogas that you can then send to a cook stove, a hot water heater, a variety of different things. So, Have you cooked on that? Well, I had a windstorm that knocked out power here for four days, and I came down here and was growing up steaks and bacon and everything. So <laughs> oh, it, it that's actually basically works. Basically methane gas. I yeah. Mean, anything that you can light on a flame to, you can use that as gas for it. And if you look at the size of it, it's quite a large propane tank, you know, in a sense. So this here is a bunker that goes down 30 feet underground. Inside of it was stored a telescopic antenna. It's crazy the technology they had back in, uh, this is the 40s, 50s? 50s, yeah. 50s, wow. 50s, 60s. 50s, 60s, 60s, yeah. The great thing is if it's not cloudy, you get to see a ton of stars at night out here. Uh, we're thinking of doing like a observatory where Ooh. guests can pull out uh, telescopes and look up at the night sky. And then maybe down underground where it's kind of climate controlled, have that be a wine cellar and we'll call this the star bar. Oh, you ready to go underground? Uh, if you, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know how to say that other than just excitement. This is still a construction process. I just need to let you know that there are still holes and trip hazards that can easily be avoided. So I need you to be aware of where you're walking. One thing you'll notice as we go underground is a change in temperature. It doesn't matter if it's 110 in the summer or negative 10 in the winter. It's going to be in the 50s and 60s year-round, sort of like a cave. Next, we have these two glass doors. Uh, this is a 2,000 pound door. It's made from manganese and has a higher melting point than regular steel. Now, you may have noticed when we came down the stairs, we went around a corner, another corner, another corner. 
The engineering is such that if that energy wave is coming down the staircase, each time it has to stop and turn, it's going to lose up to 10% of its energy. And you can see that there's a hole cut in this door. Uh -huh. This, when they decommissioned the place, this was to show that this was a non-operational base to the Soviet Union. Next, we're going to go down to the top floor of the launch control center that was known as the Ready Room. So uh, this is where the missileers used to live and sleep. So here's a cutaway image of the missile base. Uh, we started out on top of the silo. Now we're over here in the launch control center. See how small we are compared to this? Now, well, just out of curiosity, that's where we're at right now? Yeah. So we're in the, on the top floor of the launch control center. Then we're going to go through the tunnel and look down into the silo. So this is the living quarters? That's right. Okay. Originally, there were nine floors, a crib which held the missile in place. Or when they decommissioned the base back in the 1965 and 66, a salvage team came and took all of this infrastructure out of there. So then they filled this up with about 70 feet of water and they left the doors open for a period of time. That way when spy satellites went overhead, they could see the reflection in the water and know that this was a decommissioned base so it wouldn't be a target anymore. Here are our plans on fixing up the place. We started a nonprofit here in Kansas called the Ad Astra Steam Institute. So Ad Astra, as we said, is Latin for to the stars. And you're probably familiar with STEM education, science, technology, engineering. They added A for the arts and mathematics. What we want to do is turn this into an educational center for space studies showcasing the sustainable technologies it would take to set up a permanent lunar base on the moon or a colonization project on another planet. This lower level, we plan on turning into our private residence and guest suites. We'll probably do two bedrooms with a bathroom in between. And then over here is another private sauna and spa. This is the ultimate dream. I have a friend who has already converted one of these missile silos in Kansas into a 15-floor luxury underground bunker. Um, it's a condominium complex that people can buy into. We've seen many people fix up this launch control center. He's the only one we know who's fixed up the silo. Uh, he sold all of his units in the first facility. He's building a second facility right now. Our goal isn't to turn this into another luxury condo just for a few people. Our thought is to turn this into a space-themed adventure resort where as an educational center we can put people through future astronaut training, give them a simulation of what it would be like to live on a lunar base on the moon. We could even have visual windows looking out at a lunar landscape. This is original? Yeah. Unfortunately, they gutted it. Right, uh, obviously. Uh, you see these pipes that say sewage discharge and sewer vent. Uh, this is the lowest section of the building where all the sewage went to and then it was pumped up to a septic system. Watch your head here. This is a low entry lane. Now, when I bought this, this door was welded shut. My friend brought over a cutting torch and we cut the welds off. We were pulling on it from this side with a come along and I was hitting it with a sledgehammer as hard as I could. And we would get maybe a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch. Yes, we're making progress. It took hours and we finally got this thing open. You may notice there's a lot of compensation happening on the ceilings. That's why you have this graded floor down beneath. 
so any condensation, when you get that warm, moist air in contact with this cool concrete, it creates all that condensation. So now you can see my rock climbing gear and ropes. When I bought this, this door was locked from the other side, so I had to crawl through an opening for wires, swing around to this side, and cut the locks off so that we could come up here. So I, I'm a little okay. scared of heights. Okay. Is this is this going to be high? This will be safe, but okay. it is high. Yes. It, start by Holy looking hell. up. If you look up, you'll yeah. see the blast door where we first started the tour. Don't look yeah, down. Yeah, I'm not looking down. <laughs> you'll also see this ductwork and part of the air handling system for bringing fresh air into this deep silo. It's about an 80 foot drop down to where the water is. And I estimate there's between 60 and 70 feet of water down there. He's a little bit scared about coming here near the edge. Um, it's okay. So what I'll do is I'll show you. Um, here it goes. Oh my God, you're crazy. Now you see the spring. Coming up. There's the blast door up above. So, yeah. I give the camera to the people that I trust, and uh, obviously I trust Matthew. That's pretty uh, amazing. I've been repelling down in there twice now. Um, I have another friend down in Texas who's turned his missile silo into a scuba diving center where you can go scuba diving in the silo. You know, there's a lot of different things that these could be used for. Um, we've seen uh, bunkers turned into data centers for secure data storage. You have people who turn them into their homes or uh, turn them into, uh, since we've been doing this, other people are now jumping on Airbnb and letting people stay in their missile bases also. Oh so, my goodness, that's yeah. crazy. Uh, I, I'm in shock by all of this. Uh, again, please guys, contact Matt. Just give your contact information, please, for everybody one more time. Yeah, so you can find us on atlasadastra.com, uh, or you could do a simple Google search for Missile Silo Adventure Resort. Follow us and, on this journey, and come on out here and visit and stay a night. One of the most enthusiastic, lovable people is this man right here. Uh, it's amazing, your, his wife is amazing, so uh, they're, they're very amazing hosts. I cannot say enough good things about them. All right, well that pretty much concludes the tour. Okay. Um, if you, do you have any questions for me while we're down here? What's interesting to me is the history of all of this. Like, uh, we're in 2022 right now, and uh, what was that? So that's 40, 50, 60 some odd years. There was a death machine that was right here. I mean, at one point, right? Yeah, well, so it was only in operation for four years. Oh, wow. And then it was decommissioned. So this has been laying abandoned for, you know, close to six decades. So. Wow. And that's just, it's just super interesting to me. It's like, yeah, they did have a massive missile here at one point. I am super excited to see what he does in the future. Let's, uh, guys, give him a follow. I'm going to put his Instagram. I'm going to put his YouTube channel, uh, which you're going to start doing more videos about, um, how he met your wife. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just all that good stuff. So please give him a follow. We're we're excited about being host here and excited about seeing you know you guys come here or or follow us along for the journey. So awesome! Thank you very much. Awesome! Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate your time.